So you're wondering, what's it like to live in Waxahachie, Texas? Well, stick with me today because I'm going to explain all the reasons why my family and I love calling Waxahachie, Texas our home. So as you heard, we're going to be talking about living in Waxahachie, Texas. And one of the things I really do enjoy about being down at this portion of the Metroplex is you only got about a 30 minute drive into downtown Dallas and about a 45 minute drive into downtown Fort Worth. Uh, this utilizes 287 going up here and then going up to Dallas 35E. So it really is a well-located area um, for a commute into either bigger city, Fort Worth or Dallas. So that is a really, really nice factor. The other thing too is up here in some of these northern suburbs, you've got a whole lot of toll roads and that's something you do need to think about if you're looking to relocate here. Those tolls, if you're commuting into uh, Dallas especially, uh, those tolls can really, really rack up if you're commuting constantly, if you don't have a work from home job type of thing. Uh, for years, I commuted into the Love Field area when I worked for Southwest Airlines and um, I really, you know, enjoyed this commute. It was a lot easier. I stayed on one highway the whole way there. Um, and it really made for a decent commute. Now, obviously it's not 30 minutes in the morning during rush hour traffic. I'd say from down here, you may be looking closer to uh, an hour if you're going up to somewhere like Love Field, which is a little further north of Dallas. So. Um, definitely, you know, as we all know, uh, the morning commute can kind of stretch out sometimes uh, the time to get in, uh, but it really wasn't too bad at all. And uh, that's one really big reason why I love living here in Waxahachie because it really does open up your ability to commute uh, across the Metroplex way easier. So one of the spots that I really, really enjoy in Waxahachie is Getz and Daner Park. And I've talked about this place uh, in a few of my videos before um, that I've done on Waxahachie. But as you can see, you got tons and tons of space, lots of big lush green trees. And, um, you know, just like a good old fashioned playground uh, like we used to have when we were younger. Uh, some of these slides are still metal. So uh, you do wanna kind of be on guard on a hot Texas day. Uh, those things, they, they can be really, really hot. Um, but just getting a little bit of an aerial view for you guys here. I was out here doing this and yeah, you know, in the middle of uh, September, it's still pretty warm typically. Uh, sometimes we will have kind of an off uh, or not so average year and we'll be in the 80s earlier on in September. We did get a little bit of that uh, this year, which was really nice, but uh, typically, we're still in the 90s, uh, upper 90s in September, and so it's pretty warm. But the great part about Getzdaner, as you can see, there's tons of mature trees, so there's a lot of shade. And that makes a massive difference when you're out there enjoying the outdoors. Um, you know, so I just wanted to get you guys uh, a really good view of the park. Um, it's a great place to just come and relax a little bit, uh, get some outdoors time and, uh, you know, even bring your bike. Uh, they've got uh, really great bike paths. Uh, if you've got a mountain bike and you enjoy doing that, um, they've got mountain biking trails as well. Um, but this is, uh, the walking path or running path, whatever you'd like to do, um, that goes for quite a ways, um, throughout walks hatchy so it's a really really great place to just get out be in nature you know listen to the birds singing and um i really really enjoy going there with my family um, and just having a good time um, but as you can see um, it really is just a peaceful park um, it's right down kind of in the heart of town uh, this path goes actually alongside the cemetery, um, and then it actually goes uh, past Richards Park, which is the baseball field. And we'll get a aerial view of the baseball field here in a little bit. Um, that's also just an iconic ballpark. Love it. Um, but 
as you can see here, I'm gonna get us a little bit higher up. It skirts, the park skirts right along 35E. Um, and I think as we peek up over the trees here, you should be able to see it off to um, uh, my right here. Uh, yeah, you can see, you know, the traffic moving down there. So that's kind of, it hugs right along uh, 35E on the, I guess, west side of town, southwest side of town. So uh, definitely just wanted to get you guys kind of an aerial view just to see what it looked like. Uh, and, you know, I know you can't necessarily be there, but it's a great place uh, to go and enjoy time with the family or just if you want some alone time uh, and getting some good exercise in. Uh, it's an excellent spot for that. So hope you guys are enjoying this tour through the town. And as I'm getting this video together, we're just a few days away from C10s in the park that is in Getzendaner Park. It's a really cool event. Um, if you're ever in Waxahachie in and around September, late September, it's usually when it happens. Uh, the site is c10sinthepark.com. You can check it out. But this is going to be their seventh year doing it, and they have over 1,200 Chevy C10s in Getzendaner Park. It's a really cool event. And then they pick, uh, here lately, the last few years, they've been picking the top 85, I believe it is, that are kind of like best in show. They go and park around the square in Waxhatchee, and they have what they call the party on the square and they have a really cool band that comes out and it's really, really neat. So that's one thing to look at. So as you can see, we've transitioned over here to Richards Park. Uh, this, like I said, is right alongside the walking trail from Getzendaner. You can come on down that path that goes through Waxhatchee Cemetery. Uh, you can see that uh, just at the top of the screen. And uh, you can see the train tracks off to the right there as well. Uh, but this park is just, I, I love it. I never got a chance to play there, unfortunately. I went to high school in May Pearl High School, which is uh, just down the road from Waxhatchee. Uh, but I, I mean, when you see the lights on in this place at a night game, um, and it's just, it is so pretty with the trees, uh, the backdrop. And uh, if you're a baseball fan, you, you'll get what I'm saying. It's just, I, I love it. It's a really cool setting for a ballpark there. Uh, it's got a lot of history uh, at Richards Park here. So definitely wanted to show this off to you all because I just think it's a really cool setting uh, for some high school baseball. And uh, they've, they've got a pretty good competitive team as well. Another big place that we love in Waxhatchee, Texas is the Sims Library. It would be a mistake if I did not mention them here uh, and the reasons why we love living in Waxhatchee. It is an excellent library. Not only do you have a whole lot of books and other things uh, that you can check out, but they have so many kids activities and great things uh, for the youngsters to do in the summertime and throughout the year. So I cannot say enough good things about the Sims Library. Earlier when I mentioned the C10s in the park in Getzendaner Park, how they kind of pick the best in show and take the top 85 and allow them to go to the party on the square. So they park uh, the top uh, best in show for C10s in the park for the party on the square here in downtown. The downtown area is one of my favorite. It is just kind of iconic. Uh, the Ellis County Courthouse, it was built in, I think, 1897. I could be wrong a little bit there, but uh, pretty close. Uh, but the square has so many things to do. You can see the soda fountain here. Um, the Dove's Nest is a great place to grab a bite to eat. Uh, they've got the Meat Church barbecue uh, store here in the square. And... It's just got so many things. For a long, long time, the Texas Country Reporter Festival was held every September uh, in this area as well. Now they're kind of changing gears. Uh, they're gonna be calling it the Crossroads uh, of Texas 
country festival and that's going to kind of take the place but that's free they're going to have over 200 booths of arts and different uh you know vendors out there it's a really cool spot to have events like that um just kind of this backdrop with these big trees and the the courthouse uh, and all the other shops and places to eat uh, in the area so i really really love this downtown section um, it is just really pretty and uh, you can see there the uh, texas theater is uh, has basically just been refurbished and opened back up within the last few years uh, so they've got bands that play there sometimes they'll have movies uh, they'll play kind of older movies like sandlot and um, other older movies that uh, they can just you know open it up to the public they charge a you know small fee to get in and watch the movie uh, it's a really neat time there uh, but this is really a, a great spot to come and hang out with friends and family um, <clears throat> it's just not to me it gives the the city a lot of character uh, not every city is you know able to really say that because they don't have this back backdrop you also have a really nice sit down steak restaurant on the square called prime 115 uh, that's a really neat building. Uh, the Rogers Hotel is a really iconic building in the downtown area as well. And I don't know how many of you listen to 106.1 KISS FM, but one of their radio DJs, uh, Big Al Mac, he actually has a restaurant on the square in Waxhatchee called Big Al's as well. You know, I touched on this as well a little bit earlier about how it's still a little bit hot sometimes in throughout September and even sometimes midway through October here in Waxhatchee, I'd say summer, the summer months really gets ramped up in June. Sometimes if it's going to be a hot summer, you might start getting into the upper 90s and 100s uh, in mid to late May. Uh, so you've got summer that stretches typically from mid to late May or early June all the way through September typically and you know if we've got a mild summer we don't have as many days in the hundreds uh, last summer was pretty tough we had multiple uh, days in the 100s and it just dried things out a whole lot this year we had a good bit of rain in the spring and it was nice um, and we had I think on average about 20 days above 100 uh, which was actually a nice reprieve uh, for this summer. So uh, we are just about to head into fall here at the time uh, I'm filming this and it's definitely going to be a welcome uh, temperature difference in the fall and then uh, winter. So I'd say end of October into really the end of December. Sometimes you're still in the 70s um, and then maybe reaching into the the 40s um, but really the colder months here are going to be january and february typically uh, if we're going to get any kind of uh, winter weather it's going to be in january and february and if we got a colder one uh, then it might reach into early march but it's pretty rare uh, so then you've got your spring months or month <laughs> Uh, that is basically March through I'd say mid-May uh, you've got some pretty moderate temperatures there and everything so weather wise um, it's you know I enjoy it uh, the heat can get a little bit crazy sometimes but uh, I really do enjoy it here um, I'd rather have I think the more the heat than a really harsh winter um, just because I have grown up in the south most of my life so uh, as you can see here, we are now getting a little bit of drone footage of uh, Lake Waxahachie. And uh, this is another spot that I really, really enjoy. Uh, my son and I come down here and we'll go fishing every now and then. And uh, this was a kind of an odd weather day in July, I believe. We were seeing you know pretty overcast skies and it was like in the 70s in the morning. I was like, oh, let's go out there and see if we can get some fish to bite. And sure enough, we did. So. Uh, it, it was worth going out there and um, 
just enjoying nature, seeing the birds and ducks and all of that stuff. Uh, they got a couple of parks. This one uh, we come to and we'll park our vehicle and get out and just fish from the shore. Sometimes they've got kayak rentals and stuff uh, that you can do as well. Uh, we've not done that, but uh, it's definitely an option. They've got another park um, on the north side of the lake as well. Um, and then you can see here, there's some new homes that are being built near the lake here that have acre home sites uh, on either side of the lake. Uh, so it's not on the lake specifically, but it's near it. So it's a little more rural, but also, you know, a pretty close shot into town. But I definitely wanted to touch on the lake. Uh, it's a great place to come uh, and enjoy some time just fishing and enjoying the outdoors. And if you're doing your research on moving to Texas, then you have most likely heard of HEB. It is a thing. I love the store. I love a lot of things that they offer. Uh, one of those is their fresh butter tortillas. They're amazing. Uh, if you're going for the holidays, definitely go early and make sure you stock up. We saw last year, pretty sure, a near fight in the line for some tortillas. Uh, it was a little tense. Um, obviously HEB is not the only place to shop in town. Uh, we've got uh, Walmart, you can get groceries there, Target. Um, as you see, Tom Thumb is also being uh, built out. It's almost completed uh, in, in and around the North Grove neighborhood north of town uh, where a lot of new building is taking place. So. Uh, you've, you've also got Lowe's and Home Depot uh, up north of 287, so any home improvement stuff you're looking to do, you've got that there. Academy Sports and Outdoors is also a store uh, that a lot of people like to go to for your sporting equipment, uh, fishing, all of the outdoors stuff, camping is all accessible there. So you've got a lot of uh, the town itself yes it's a little more rural but you've got a lot of modern conveniences uh, in town and that really is only going to continue growing as our population grows here so um, i really enjoy of course heb but that is not the only place to go and shop and get groceries and everything like that you've also got jc pennies um, and beals i think is how you say it um, I don't really shop at those stores necessarily. Um, they got Ross Dress for Less options in town as well. Uh, but I don't know. I mean, I think that's maybe just always a last minute thing. If you can't find it or get it quick enough on Amazon these days, it's kind of nuts. But uh, sad to say that sometimes uh, the walk in store option, I guess, maybe is a last resort now. But. Um, yeah, there's plenty of shopping available in the area that is very convenient. As you can see here, I've also got some aerial footage that's been playing in the background. And this is of the North Grove neighborhood where there's been a whole lot of building going on over the last several years in the northern side of Waxhatchee, just north of 287 and east of 35. So. Uh, you'll see a lot of new build uh, homes in this area currently for sale. Uh, you've got many popular builders, uh, Bloomfield, Highland Homes, Chesmar, um, John Houston Homes, First Texas Homes. Uh, so many, Trophy Signature is out there as well. Uh, but they're offering a lot of great incentives right now uh, as well. And uh, the, you know these communities, they've got you know elementary school very close by. Um, you've also got uh, you know in this case here in Dove Hollow that we're looking at right now, uh, a pool and splash pad set up, um, which is really nice. You know for the kids, uh, you don't necessarily have to have a pool in your backyard if you don't want one or don't uh, feel like shelling out that expense. Um, so it is pretty cool to be able to, you know, partake in these community amenities uh, that they've got. Um, also, you know, there's uh, some bigger home build sites in uh, Waxahachie. Uh, Highland Homes just moved over uh, to another neighborhood that they've started out. Uh, and they've got you know, up to half acre home sites, which is a really popular thing right now. 
Uh, it's a little more space. It's not, you know, so close to, uh, you know, your neighbor's yard, uh, that kind of thing. You got a little more space to spread out. There's a lot of really good options in and around Waxahachie, you know, for whatever type of home or amount of space that you want for you and your family. Uh, so I hope you guys enjoyed this kind of more in-depth tour of Waxahachie. Uh, if I can help you, your friends or family move in to this area, make it a successful move, whether you're already here and you'd like to, you know, potentially sell your home and you know, upsize, or if you're looking to downsize, whatever it may be, or if you're just looking to move to Waxahachie brand new from out of state. I've helped several folks do that successfully. So I'd love to be a resource to you, your friends and family. If I can help you out in any way, my contact information is down below in the description, and I'd love to be a resource to you. Thank you all so much. I'm gonna continue to put out new content each and every week on this channel. So Give it a, a like and subscribe if you'd like to, and I hope to see you again next week. Thanks, take care.